This is lesson 9.1 on quadratic graphs and properties of quadratic equations. This is the first lesson in chapter 9, so the stuff that you're going to learn today is going to be pretty basic. There is a little bit of information that you have to process, but in general, it's all pretty, uh, pretty easy. So today you're going to look at graphs, and your learning target is to graph quadratic equations and they'll be in the form of y equals ax squared or also in y equals ax squared plus c. That just means they're going to be like this or like this. So if you're going to set your Cornell notes up, do that with your learning target, your essential question, hit the pause button, and when you're ready to go, hit play. All right, let's start with the definition of what a quadratic function is. Now you've looked at quadratic functions kind of. It's just a function that's written in this form, y equals ax squared plus bx plus c. And the reason that I say that you've looked at quadratic functions kind of is we've been working with polynomials and so you have looked at expressions like ax squared plus bx plus c. Now all we're going to do today is add a y equals to it and call it a function. And today you're going to look at ones that look like this or like this. We'll get to these in future lessons. So here we go. When you take a quadratic function and you graph it, the shape that comes out on a graph is called a parabola. It's not parabola, it's parabola. And so what does it look like? Well, here's an example. This is the graph of a quadratic function. It's called a, called a parabola. And when you do that, what you'll notice is it's symmetrical. So this parabola has an axis of symmetry that splits it right down the middle and makes it a mirror image or makes it symmetrical. So each parabola has an axis of symmetry. The lowest point or the highest point on a parabola is called a vertex. So in this example, the vertex is at the bottom. So each parabola has a vertex and an axis of symmetry. Here's another sample parabola. This one's almost the same as the first one, except it's upside down and it opens the opposite direction. But it still has an axis of symmetry and there's still a point called a vertex. Now when the parabola that you graph has a vertex at the bottom, then the point at the bottom is called the minimum. And when you make a parabola that opens down, like the second example, when the vertex is at the top, that's called a maximum. And when we refer to parabolas, we either say they open up, like this one does, or they open down, like the second one does. That just means the opening is facing up and the opening is facing down. And that's pretty much it. A parabola is symmetrical, it has a vertex, and the vertex can either be a minimum or a maximum based on whether it's at the bottom or at the top of the parabola. Okay, so what you're going to do is graph some parabolas. And I'm noticing an error right here, so I'll just rewrite it. You're going to graph a function like y equals 2x squared. And the way you do it is to make a table of values. This is no different than when you made tables of values for linear equations. You're just going to make a t-chart and set it up with x values and y values. You get to choose the x values, calculate the y values, and then graph the ordered pairs. Now in, with a parabolic or quadratic function, you need to choose values that have both negative and positives, and of course zero. So easiest values are negative two, negative one, zero, one, and two. So you're choosing the x values, then you calculate the y values by putting it into the equation. So you're gonna take negative two and replace x with negative two. Negative two to the second power is four times two is eight and then you replace x with negative one. 
negative 1 to the second power is 1 times 2 is 2. Then you're going to put 0 in place of x and you continue to do this. 0 squared is 0 times 2 is 0. And you go through and enter all the values. 1 squared is 1 times 2 is 2. And finally you put 2 in for x and you get 2 squared is 4 times 2 is 8. So you have this table of values that you have created, choosing your own x's, calculating the y's, and now you just graph it on a graph. And because I have all even numbers, I'm going to set this up and go by 2's on the y-axis. and ones on the x-axis. Here are my ordered pairs, or my coordinates. Negative 2, 8. Negative 1, 2, 0, 0, 1, 2, and 2, 8. Now you can certainly choose to do more points than this, but to get a good picture of a parabola, you're going to need at least 5. Now you just connect the dots. Now when you do that, you don't draw straight lines to connect them. A parabola is a curve. So you're going to start at the left point and come down and curve and go back up. And that's it. And just as we saw in the other examples, this parabola has an axis of symmetry. It has a vertex and because the vertex is at the bottom, this is a minimum. The last part of this question says what are the domain and the range? And remember, domain is what you put in or your input, and range is what you get out or your output. Your domain could be considered the x and the range could be considered the y. So for the domain, I can put in any number I want to. There are no restrictions for what the domain is. So your answer for the domain is all real numbers. What comes out though, there are some conditions. Because it doesn't matter whether you put a negative number in for x or a positive number, all of the output numbers ended up being positive or zero. So your range is any number or all real numbers that are greater or equal to zero. What you get out is anything greater than or equal to zero. And that's it. Now for this example, if you don't have a graphing calculator at home, you can just watch. The purpose of this example is to show you what happens when you change the coefficient or the number in front of the x squared term. So what I'm going to do is graph with the graphing calculator each of these functions. So I'll start with the first one, f of x. And by the way, this function notation f of x means the same as y equals. So I could rewrite them like this and it's the same. So I'll start with the first function, negative 4 x to the second power. And when I graph it, <coughs> what you should notice is it's pretty skinny and it's opening down. Okay, let's graph the next function. y equals 1 fourth x. 1 divided by 4 x squared. And that function opens up and it's pretty wide. And the third function is just y equals x squared. And I messed that up. Let's try that again. y equals x squared. There's the first one. There's the second one, 
and the third one. Okay, so what you should notice about the third one is it's just a little narrower than the one next to it. So a good observation would be, hmm, if there's one fourth here and it's wide and there's no coefficient or just one and it's a little narrower, it looks like the bigger the number in front of the x squared, the skinnier or narrower the parabola is. So let's just double check that and we'll put in another function. One fourth to one got narrower. Let's put five x squared in there and see what happens. So five x squared is right here. So the conclusion you can draw is if the number in front of the x squared term is bigger then the parabola or the graph is going to be narrower. So the directions on this problem is to put them in order from widest to narrowest. So the widest function is the one with the smallest coefficient. So this is the widest. The next widest is the one with just x squared. And the skinniest was, even though it opened downward, was the one with the 4 in front of it. Okay, the last example that I'm going to show you today involves adding a constant at the end. What we have is a function y equals 2x squared, and we're going to compare that with another function that's almost the same function, y equals 2x squared, but we're going to add 3 to it and see what happens. So I'm going to quickly just show you values. I'm going to make a table. These are negatives, not equals. If I take y equals 2x squared and I put in these numbers, what I get out is 8, 2, 0, and 2, and 8. And when I graph it, it looks like this. So this is the function y equals 2x squared. Now if I take that same function and add 3 to the end of it, my new values end up being 11, 5, 3, 5, and 11. And when I graph that, I get this parabola. And here's what you should notice. This blue parabola is the same shape as the red parabola. The only difference is that I've taken this shape and I've moved it up three spaces. One, two, three. And that three comes from the three that I added to the end. So if I have a parabola like this, or a function like y equals 3x squared, and I take that and I add 2, all I'm going to do is shift it up two spaces. Okay, a lot of information, not very difficult, but lots to process. So let's review really quickly. A parabola is what you get when you graph a quadratic function. It's symmetrical, it has a vertex, and the vertex can either be a minimum if it's at the bottom, a maximum at the top. To graph a parabola or graph a quadratic function, you make a t-table and graph the points. And when you're comparing parabolas, when you're comparing quadratic functions, the smaller the number in front of the x squared term, the wider it is. Wide, skinny, skinnier. And finally, if you're adding a constant to the end of a quadratic function, all that will do is take the same shape and shift it up or down.